Good morning and welcome to Tuesday Morning Prayer for Tuesday 30th of August 2022, part of the online prayer ministry of Christ Church Cathedral, Newcastle. My name is Catherine Boyer, I'm the Dean of Newcastle and the deanery where this service is being recorded, Christ Church Cathedral, Newcastle and St Peter's Hamilton all stand on a Wabakal land. It always has been a Wabakal land, it always will be a Wabakal land. The sovereignty of this land has never been ceded. I pay my respects to elders past and present and pray that I, with the Cathedral and St Peter's communities, may join with them in a spirit of reconciliation in caring for all that God has entrusted to us in the good gifts of creation. This week, the clergy of the Diocese of Newcastle are at Diocesan Leaders Conference. And so throughout this week, there will only be morning prayer offered as part of our online prayer ministry. But know that we are praying for you and we ask your prayers for us. You can pray evening prayer using the prayer book or using the ePray app. And on the ePray app, it also has the readings and the psalm for the day. And it's available to download for free from your app stores on your smart device. Tuesday morning prayer is found on page 396 of the prayer book. Our Psalms are Psalms 148 and 149 and our reading from the first letter of John chapter 2. In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer and Sanctifier, Amen. We will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Our opening canticle, a song of God's mercy. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, and raised us up with him, and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace, in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalms 148 and 149 on page 378 of the prayer book. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from heaven. O praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. O praise him all his host. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you stars of light. Praise him, you highest heaven, and you waters that are above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were made. He established them for ever and ever. He made an ordinance which shall not pass away. O praise the Lord from the earth, O praise the Lord from the earth. Praise him, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, mist and snow, and storm wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts of the wild and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old folk and children together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven, and he has lifted high the horn of his people. Therefore he is the praise of all his servants, of the children of Israel, a people that is near him. Praise the Lord. Psalm 149. O oh, praise the Lord, and sing to the Lord a new song. O oh, praise him in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise him in the dance, 
Let them sing his praise with timbrel and with harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He adorns the meek with his salvation. Let his faithful ones exult in his glory. Let them sing for joy upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and chastisement upon the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to visit upon them the judgment that is decreed. Such honour belongs to all his faithful servants. Praise the Lord. Lord our God, our Creator, Redeemer and Sanctifier, we ask you to cleanse us from all hypocrisy, to unite us to our fellow men and women by the bonds of peace and love, and to confirm us in holiness now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now by this we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments is a liar, and in, and in such a person the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person the love of God has reached perfection. By this we may be sure that we are in him. Whoever says, I abide in him, ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new commandment that is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says I am in the light while hating a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Whoever loves a brother or sister lives in the light and in, and in such a person there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates another believer is in the darkness, walks in the darkness, and does not know the way to go, because the darkness has brought on blindness. May your word live in us, and bear much fruit to your glory. Our canticle, a song of the blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what is right, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for mercy shall be shown to them. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Throughout this week in this time of prayer, I'm going to read Reflections by David Adam from his book Tides and Seasons. I invite you to make yourselves comfortable, to be still, and to join in this time of reflection. This reflection is called In the Beginning, God. Know that at this very moment we dwell in him and he in us. Our beginning and our end are in him. In him we live and move and have our being. Know that all things have their beginning in him. Rest for a few moments, knowing the fact that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Meister Eckhart said, Every creature is a word of God and a book about God. Take a piece of creation and start to seek out its beginnings. Take something earthy and discover the mysteries of creation. See if you can visualise how the first drop of water began or how soil was formed over the earth. Picture the beginning of the air we breathe or the start of a single species of flower. Choose just one thing and probe its depths, its mysteries and its beginnings. I seek to meditate every week on a single part of God's creation. Why not do the same? Take time to consider that God is beyond space. God is beyond time. God is beyond matter. God is beyond words. God is beyond understanding. God is beyond our senses. This is what some people call transcendence, the God beyond. But God is also in. In the beginning, God. In the beginning of space, in the beginning of time, in the beginning of matter, in the beginning of our life, in his creation, in the heart of each of us. This is what some people call imminence, declaring that God is among us and is to be discovered through his creation. We can see creation as the first incarnation where God dwells and it is in God. For us, the primary scriptures are creation. God is waiting to be revealed through his world. If we fail to understand his world or decide that we do not like it, how can we understand or love its creator? We must seek God in every beginning, for he is there. We must learn to discover his presence in each encounter. It is how we begin that will influence how we continue and what we see. So we need to begin with the glory and the presence. 
we can discover that the God who is beyond can be comprehended by our love, and that love of necessity must begin with his world. Here is part of a sermon by the Celtic monk Columbanus. Seek no farther concerning God, for those who wish to know the great deep must first review the natural world. For knowledge of the Trinity is properly likened to the depths of the sea, according to the saying of the sage. And the great deep, who can find it out? If then a man wishes to know the deepest ocean of divine understanding, let him first, if he is able, scan that visible sea, and the less he finds himself able to understand of those creatures which lurk beneath the waves, the more let him realise that he can know less of the depths of its creator, and, as he ought and should, let him venture to treat less of creator than of creature, since none can be competent in the greater, if he has not first explored the less. And when, as a man, and when a man is not trusted in the lesser, in the greater, how should he be trusted? For why, I ask, does a man ignorant of earthly things examine the heavenly? Understand the creation if you wish to know the creator. So let us make sure that we do just that. Let us seek to comprehend with our love even if we cannot with our mind. It is a pity that, when given the privilege of a mystical revelation through creation, most of us just want to make an inventory. We are a consumer society, and we consume rather than savour. God's goodness fills all his creatures, and all his blessed works full and endlessly overflow in them. Promise that each day you will look at one of God's creatures with love and that you will explore its beginnings. Let us pray. All life that is within the sea, in river every, every dwelling thing, all in the firmament that be, thy goodness overflowing sing. O Jesu, 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 unto all, whom all praise is due. Each single star fixed in the sky, each bird arising on the wing, they that beneath the sun do lie, Thy goodness all proclaiming sing. O Jesu, 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 unto whom all praise is due. O God of the morning, Christ of the hills, O Spirit who all the firmament fills, O Trinity blessed who all goodness wills, keep us all our days. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger, and in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. <laughs>